Americans, by and large, love suburbia. It has promised space, affordability, convenience, family life, and upward mobility. After half a century of constant development, more than half our population has moved here. And as the population of suburban sprawl has exploded, so too the suburban way of life has become embedded in the American consciousness. Suburbia and all it promises has become the American dream. But as we enter the 21st century, serious questions are emerging about the sustainability of this way of life. Does the suburban dream have a future? The whole suburban project, I think, can be summarized pretty uh, succinctly as the greatest misallocation of resources in the history of the world. America took all of its post-war wealth and invested it in a living arrangement that has no future. The basic cause of it all is, is the end of cheap and abundant energy. Cheap oil is the party that we've been enjoying for the past 150 years. And uh, that party is coming to a, uh, an end. Within our lifetimes, we're going to see uh, the end of the age of oil. And the result of that will be the end of the American way of life. Here, in a typical North American suburb, life seems to be carrying on much as it has for the past 50 years. With every passing year, more and more streets like this one replace farmers' fields as more and more people come here for their share of the good life. History, however, has proven itself indifferent to people's hopes and dreams for a better life. Even the best of intentions have often not been enough to avoid calamity. And suburbia began with the best of intentions. The dream of the suburbs was the antidote to city life, and in particular, the life of the industrial city and the industrial town. And the antidote was going to be country living for everybody. And the suburbs was a way of delivering that to the masses. Certainly the first suburbs in the late 19th century enabled the better off upper middle class to get away from these moiling and toiling uh, workers and all their vulgar worker culture of the cities. In the 1870s and 80s you, and 90s, you get the first template, which is uh, the suburb based on uh, the idea of the manor in a park, you know, the, the estate in a park. And these are subdivisions like Llewellyn Park in New Jersey and Riverside, nine miles outside the Chicago Loop, which are basically large Victorian villas deployed in a park-like setting. You know, in the beginning, there must have been elements of it that were lovely because the first people who were moving out there were, were pretty well off. And they were moving to real countryside. There were no Kmarts in 1897. Then in the late 19th, early 20th century, before World War I, you get something quite different. You get the, the, the streetcar suburb, which is based on this idea of the streetcar lines now leaving the city and these new uh, suburbs, which are still fairly civic in their physical design. And there were these stops, and each one of these stops created a beautiful little main street and smaller, higher density housing, cottages, bungalows nearby, all very walkable in the most traditional sense. And they are some of the most wonderful uh, neighborhoods in America. They're, they're just outside the central cities. Then what happens is in the 1920s you get the mass motoring democratization of suburbia and that results in the boom of the 1920s largely based on creating these automobile suburbs and all of their furnishings and accessories and that project is interrupted by the Great Depression and the Second World War. Oh 
sir. All this can't keep a fella from putting down his ideas. Something is going to add up here. His own air-conditioned castle with a deep breeze. Cooler for beer. Great big lawn where Fett and Pubsy will welcome him home. The Veterans Emergency Housing Program is launched to help solve the housing emergency in hundreds of cities. The target, 2,700,000 homes and apartments started by the end of 1947. This is the payoff to our soldiers who fought in World War II. You get to come home, you don't have to live in a city anymore. You can live in a brand new home in the suburbs and you're gonna have a wife who can stay at home and a family, and that's the payout. And that became a packaged Amer American dream, but it's only a post-World War II American dream. It the suburbs wouldn't exist if it weren't for cheap oil. Um, the U.S. is a car culture. The automobile industry started in the U.S. And really, the automobile industry got, it got its start here because we were looking for ways to use that cheap oil. The U.S. was awash in oil in the early 20th century. In the 1930s, they were discovering the stuff so fast that uh, oil in Texas was cheaper than drinking water by the carload. The car companies quickly became the engine-driving U.S. industry and economic growth. The result of this is that uh, we have created this new system of habitation where people live miles and miles from where they work and from where they get their food and all of, all of their other necessities based on the idea that they can and they must hop in their car at any moment and, and travel miles and miles. And the only way that works is on the basis of, of cheap energy. Now we're stuck up a cul-de-sac in a cement SUV uh, with an empty gas tank. Across North America, we arrive in our cars, trucks, and SUVs at gas stations like this. We expect to fill our tanks with gas at prices half those of Europe and much of the rest of the world. We expect endless natural gas to heat our homes, and we expect endless natural gas to generate the increasing amounts of electricity that we consume. Cheap plentiful and dependable fossil fuels have made our contemporary life possible. Everything from our trains and buses, our cars and trucks, our heating in the winter months and cooling in the summer, all are dependent on cheap and reliable fossil fuel energy. And there is no other way of life that uses more of this energy than suburbia. It is cheap and abundant fossil fuels that pave, lubricate, and drive the turbo growth of our suburban development. On and on, this way of life expands into farmers' fields, meadows, and hinterland, offering up six lanes of the American dream with no end in sight.